very happy to be the first one in the afternoon to make the opener for the afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Da Hongfei. I'm the co-founder of NIO. Uh, my topic today will be the promise of smart economy. And to do that, I need a clicker. Uh, so where are the clickers? Hi, guys. Uh, today, I will talk a little about my, the history of NIO, before NIO, my, about myself, and then my understanding of blockchain and why it is so important for the future smart economy, and then what NIO will do in the future smart economy. I will talk a little about uh, when I was in college. Uh, I'm not a computer science major, but one of my hobbies in college is to dig into the deep, deep level of computers. Uh, because I, uh, I went to college in 1997, that is the year that internet or people get, get access to the internet in mainland China. Uh, I started to uh, play with a computer. I tried to crack the software hard disk lock in the computer labs and try to teach myself assembly language and then write my own hard disk lock and install it into the computers in the lab. So it becomes a real personal computer for me. So I spent a lot of time uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, research and learning uh, computer science. And then the other hobby uh, when I was in college is economics. I came across a blog called uh, New Institutional Era. This blog introduced me to the Austrian and Chicago School of Economics. So I became a, uh, a, a free market believer. And then, magically, after almost uh, 10 years, uh, I discovered something very special. That something is called Bitcoin. Uh, it, it is also, I, I, I believe, I think I read it from a blog. Uh, it uh, uh, described how Bitcoin works. And then I instantly fall in love with it because it combines two things, two of my hobbies when I was in college. That is uh, computer science and economics. And I started to spend a lot of time research, uh, on, research on it and to read the white paper. And I even registered a, uh, a domain name. It's called mongox.cn. Any one of you know mongox.com? It used to be the largest uh, Bitcoin exchange in the world. And I decided to run a, my own business around Bitcoin, to, to, to run an exchange and link the uh, order book with mongox.cn to mongox.com. Uh, later on, that become a very, it's a, uh, it's a proven uh, business model because one of the biggest exchanges today, Bitfinex, they're using the same model at the very beginning. They link their order book to a bit stamp in Europe. And later on, they, they cut the link and they become an independent exchange. So that's uh, uh, the very early days before there's even a community or industry in China for blockchain or Bitcoin. Then uh, after two years of uh, research or study alone, uh, with, the price rocket, uh, uh, with the price going up uh, dramatically in 2013, uh, there becomes a community in China. Uh, I decided to build up the community f uh, of blockchain, of Bitcoin. I started to organize meetups, started to organize conference like this, but much, much smaller, even smaller than uh, the audience will be 20 or maybe 25. Uh, and if the number exceeds 30, that's a big one. So we even uh, invited uh, Vitalik to China for the first time, and uh, in China, he introduced uh, Ethereum to the Chinese uh, blockchain community. That's 2013. And after, after maybe four months or five months after uh, Vitalik announced Ethereum, we decided to build our own blockchain. Uh, that, that is uh, NEO. But at that time, uh, it's not called NEO, it's called NShares. We are also inspired by, uh, I believe, which is the first ICO in human history. It's called uh, ASIC Miner. There is one Chinese uh, PhD candidate. He's studying in a, in a prestigious Chinese university uh, for PhD. And he said that uh, 
he has the ability to build an ASIC mining machine for Bitcoin. At that time, most of the mining is doing through uh, GPU. ASIC, ASIC miner is 10 times, if, if not 100 times, uh, more efficient than GPU mining. So he said, he claimed that can, he can do that. But the only problem is he, do not, uh, he, he doesn't have the money to do so. So he posted a Bitcoin address and asked people to invest in his business idea. And he promised to give people a share to share the uh, profit, the future profit. Uh, there are some people buy in and they send him uh, actually a lot of Bitcoins. Uh, that's uh, uh, 16,000 uh, 16, Bitcoins at that time. But it only worth about uh, 150 US dollars uh, at the very early days. And with that money, uh, that guy uh, successfully uh, built a ASIC miner machine and a business around it. And he do, is, did issue uh, shares, and the shares is tradable on a, on a centralized uh, security, uh, it's not security, a centralized cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, and people made a lot of money. Uh, the, the price per share uh, started from uh, 0.1 Bitcoin per share to uh, f uh, eight, five Bitcoins uh, in uh, only a few months. And uh, with that, during that time, the value of Bitcoin also uh, went up several times. So people made a lot of money. But the problem is it, um, it's, it, they're doing it in a very primitive way. And later on, that guy, uh, called, uh, his ID is Fry Cat, just disappeared because he faced some uh, business difficulty, some issue. And uh, even the shares uh, traded on the uh, exchange, is, uh, the exchange is cracked down by uh, SEC. So every investors uh, actually at the end lost their money. So we are inspired by the uh, uh, story and we decided to build a, a blockchain for crowdfunding to better uh, facilitate crowdfunding. So that later on becomes uh, NEO. And it, uh, NEO is funded by two co-founders. One is me speaking at a, a conference, a blockchain conference in 2014. And the other one is uh, Eric Zhang. He's my co-founder, he's a technical guy. And when I talk and I uh, uh, tell him the idea, he very calmly said, yes, I can do that. And we decided to make it happen. Um, the the, one of the reasons why NEO is doing uh, good uh, on the market is because we are, have many innovations. It's quite different from other blockchains. Uh, for example, the consensus mechanism is very different. We are first in the world to use a BFT style consensus. It's called delegated BFT. And today, many of you are, many of industry practitioners are talking about STO. And a BFT style consensus is very is perfect uh, for security exchanges for security offerings because it offers uh, there is identity uh, with the consensus nodes uh, there is a very good finality with the consensus so dbft is the consensus we use it's very new and also we have a, a dual token economic model we have two tokens the new token and a gas token new is a stake you can use it to vote to do on-chain governance and gas is a utility you use it to pay for basically pay for everything on the blockchain uh, for the transaction fees and also our smart contract system is very different from other blockchains you can use matured conventional uh, programming languages like c sharp like uh, Java, Python, or JavaScript to write smart contract with NEO. And also, uh, the philosophy, the, the management model is different. We have a much stronger governance comparing to other blockchains. We, uh, the foundation, the NEO foundation, reserved about 50% uh, of all the tokens. And as of today, uh, after three or four years, we still hold about 40% of the tokens. And in the coming years, we will gradually distribute those tokens to the community. 
And then uh, after the launch of Mainnet, after doing, uh, after a fo uh, a boosting the ecosystem, we held our first developers conference last year, 2018, uh, January. It is in San Francisco, and about 600 people, 600, most of them are developers, attended our first uh, developer conference. Uh, they're coming from US, coming from Europe, from Asia, from many, every corners of the world. And this is our second developer conference. It happened in Seattle uh, only a, a one month ago, and uh, 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 about 400 or 500 developers attended the conference, and it's a very, uh, my experience, it's a very good experience. So today, NEO is having a very strong, very uh, diversified uh, community uh, across the globe. This is the history of NEO, and I'm going to talk about a little about uh, the understanding of blockchain and why it will be the infrastructure for the future smart economy. Um, first, blockchain is a distributed ledger. It's a di distributed ledger technology, a DLT. And second, it is also a platform for decentralized applications. So people can build applications on top of this, uh, on top of the blockchain. So it's a platform. But it, NEO is not a, uh, a, a, a private platform. It's an open platform. It's a, blockchain is an open platform. It's more like a protocol. So if you follow the protocol, follow the specifications, your implementation can directly talk to other people's implementation. It's completely open. Uh, so it's uh, much like a network protocol, like TCP IP. When we talk about TCP IP, we think of uh, uh, internet. And a lot of people said that uh, the traditional uh, internet is for information. It is very good for delivering information, but it's not so good for delivering value. A blockchain is like a value internet. It's good at transferring assets, transferring currencies, anything have value. But my understanding of blockchain is more than that. I think blockchain is also a new institutional technology. A institution is a system that uh, human invented to, to organize, to better uh, uh, facilitate production, facilitate the human society. Uh, our legal system is an institution. Uh, company is a kind of institution. Um, even marriage, even sometimes culture is a very loose uh, institution. But blockchain is a, is a new way to, <coughs> to form new institutions. Uh, we've seen many, uh, we, uh, any of you know DAO, the, the DAO that being hacked on Ethereum? The DAO is like a new institution, it's not a company, but it's some organization that is uh, 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 um, set up by the, by the inventors and also obeyed by those rules defined by computer languages. Uh, within a hum a human history, we have different uh, technology, uh, different later technologies, and different technology will bring us different level of collaborations and economi uh, uh, economies. Uh, in the very ancient time, we are in primitive economy. It's a, a hunter-gatherer society, and because the, uh, techno the later technology is so primitive, there's no way to define uh, your property. So there's no real private property. Uh, all properties are egalitarian. And uh, so the collaboration is only happen in a very small circle, uh, maybe in your family, maybe in a, a kinship or a tribe level. And then um, we move on, we move on to agriculture economy. Within agriculture economy, we have new ways to record things. We have uh, tally sticks. We, people even invent, invented a double entry keep, uh, bookkeeping. And with this technology, we have a better way to record uh, 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 ownership. And we have, we, for, for the first time, we see a very limited private property uh, ownership. Uh, some of the personal properties are belong to, uh, to you, uh, but the land, the means of production, are belong to the king or to the, uh, to the lord. And we saw a bigger level of uh, collaboration. Collaboration happens at the township level. And then, with, uh, in, uh, with, the in, with a lot of inventions, we moved into an uh, uh, industrial economy. In an industrial economy, most of the societies are in 
the, their political system are, are either a capitalism or market socialism. And we have uh, new technologies like spreadsheet, like digital ledger, even distributed ledger to, rec to record things. And now we see a very uh, um, a fine defined uh, um, uh, ownership. We have private properties. And only with this uh, kind of new tech, new ledger technologies, we can have public companies. We can issue those tokens to all the uh, uh, retail investors across the nation. So the collaboration happened at a much larger scale, at a national scale. And what's next? I believe we are moving to the next phase of human society. We will experiencing a see a new kind of economy called smart economy. And at the smart economy, everything will be digital. Every physical things will have its digital representative. And because it's digital, we can use computer languages to manage them. So everything will be programmable. We can program them. And because it is programmable, or every asset, or every, digi every digital representative uh, in different systems will be interoperable. So we won't have uh, independent silos of information or assets. Everything can be linked together and interoperable with each other. Um, with such kind of uh, a linked network, if everything is in a in a one system or is controlled by one identity, it will be a disaster if, if there is anything bad happened to the one actor. So we really need a decentralized a system. And this decentralized system, we don't need to trust a trusted third party. We, instead, we uh, trust the technology itself. And because it's decentralized, it will be transparent, it will be very uh, inclusive, and the ownership will be very different. We, don't, we have a new technology to record ownership. We don't need to, uh, we don't need to 100% fully control or fully own something. We are seeing the model of a shared economy, like shared ride, like Uber, like a, a shared bike in China, the Ofo or mobile bike. They, we don't really need to own something by ourselves. We can share it with others. So we have a finer granularity of ownership. So with the, this new kind of ownership, the collaboration will happen at a very, very uh, large scale. And we will have, uh, for the first time, see a true international or global free market. And the government probably will become smaller. Uh, we will see new forms of institutions that that's, will go beyond companies or uh, any, uh, any of organization we are seeing today. So what NEO will do? NEO is an open network for the future smart economy. And uh, the smart economy will, will, so new is not just a blockchain, it's, a, it's an open network. So we will work with other technologies like AI, IoT, cloud computing, and so on. And we will, in the, for, the next, for the coming years, uh, we will have a lot of uh, improvement uh, for, for the uh, technology perspective and also governance perspective. For technologies, we will have a new version called NEO3. We will have a completely new architecture. We will have better layering, so uh, people can build layer two solutions on top of new. Uh, by the way, I do believe in the next uh, maybe two or three years, layer two solutions will be a huge thing. And we will have a optimized consensus mechanism. We will have new functionalities, so smart contract can directly access internet resources uh, within, the, uh, within the blockchain. You don't need to uh, uh, rely on the third party oracles. And also we will uh, improve our security. And also we will have uh, different uh, infrastructure modules like a distributed file system, like a identity system. And then for governance, we, uh, this is the current structure of new governance. We have the new foundation. The foundation is responsible for strategy and financial. And also we have two uh, uh, branches. One is called new global development. And the other one is uh, new global capital. Uh, NGC or new global capital is, doing, is the investment arm of uh, new. They're doing very well in, uh, uh, in financial performance. And for the coming years, we have, uh, uh, in 2018, at the first developer conference, we announced our NEO's mission. NEO's mission is to make NEO the number one blockchain by 2020. So that's uh, about one year's time, uh, or two years' time, depending on how you define 2020, the, the beginning or the end. Um, 
But we need to define what is the number one blockchain. We don't think uh, the blockchain with biggest market cap is uh, is a number one. We define number one to become the first, the most favorable platform to build applications on top of it. Because at this stage, developer is still very, very important, the crucial part, element of a public blockchain. So we want Neo to, prov uh, to provide the best performance, to provide a very diversified ecosystem, and to be compliant ready to provide uh, compliant solutions. To, to meet that goal, we need to have something new. So we decided to set up a new office in Seattle. That's the first time we started a office outside of China. And Seattle office, uh, NGD Seattle office, will be led by two former uh, uh, Microsoft executives, and John and, P and Huang Peng. John is a former GM of Microsoft Digital, and he uh, help Microsoft Digital uh, to grow from zero to a, a half billion business. My last uh, slide will be um, the quest, uh, to answer a question. I've been answered a lot. Uh, what's the difference between new and other blockchains? And uh, I, there are many answers, like there are different uh, uh, consensus, different economic model, but the key factor, I believe, is uh, philosophy. Uh, at NEO, we are, uh, we, the philosophy of NEO is called pragmatical idealism. I'm a believer of uh, progressive uh, decentralization. At this stage, uh, blockchain is still uh, evolving very quickly. I don't think a fully decentralized, f to be fully decentralized is, uh, is the only way to do blockchain right. Um, we still need to be very efficient to upgrade the software, to, uh, to change things on the fly. So at NEO, we are still, uh, we are more uh, centralized than blockchains like Bitcoin or maybe Ethereum, but we are slowly uh, in a decentralization process. I, do, I, I very appreciate the quote from a motivational speaker called Simon Sinek. He said, pure prag uh, prag pragmatism cannot imagine a bold future, and pure idealism cannot get anything done. It's uh, the delicate blend of both that drives innovation. So let's keep the hard work, and let's work together to make the magic happen. Thank you very much.